people's health and well-being in relation to the high quality development of disease prevention and control could you tell us how the disease prevention and control system has evolved and how it will work to safeguard people's life thank you for the question I would also like to take this opportunity to thank you, friends from the press, for your care and support for our work relating to disease prevention and control. General Secretary Xi Jinping and the CPC Central Committee have attached great importance to the building of a disease prevention and control system and made strategic plans on reforming and improving such a system. Since the establishment of our administration, we have resolutely implemented the decisions of General Secretary Xi Jinping and the CPC Central Committee. The guiding principles on high-quality development of disease prevention and control were approved by the State Council. We have upheld and strengthened the party's central and unified leadership over our work, streamlined our system and mechanism, clarified our functions, and improved our professional capabilities, as evidenced by the following five mores. First, monitoring and early warning have become more agile. We have made continued efforts to streamline systems, expand monitoring channels, regulate early warning, and improve professional capabilities. We have established and improved the data-driven monitoring and early warning system for infectious diseases. With subsystems including Sentinel Hospital, virus mutation monitoring, and urban sewage monitoring system. We have increased information and data sharing with other departments. This has enabled us to predict the dynamics of epidemics and make early arrangements and effective response. Second, emergency response has become more effective. We have set up 20 national emergency response teams for acute infectious diseases. Wherever there were a breakout, we would be able to immediately send medical teams. For example, when an earthquake hit Gansu last December, Three national medical teams based in Gansu and Qinghai arrived at the affected areas immediately and helped disinfect the environment, monitor infectious diseases and drinking water quality and assess possible risks, which helped prevent a major breakout of diseases after the earthquake. In in the future, we will set up another five national medical teams as well as emergency squads at city and county levels, which, which will further improve our capacity for emergency response. Third, techn technical teams we adopted have become more advanced. We have fully applied latest scientific and technological outcomes and in IT to make our prevention and control efforts more science-based and targeted. With a national direct reporting system in place, which is also the largest in the world, world reporting time of infectious diseases is cut from five days to four hours. At the national level, a system that is able to identify pathogens from 300 kinds within 72 hours has been established. 100% of provincial level and 20% uh, of municipal level CDCs are able to give nucleic acid tests and conduct virus isolation. A national epidemiological investigation system and the hotline 95120 were set up, which helped increase the efficiency of our relevant work. Fourth, our supervision has become more for forceful. We have continued to strengthen the comprehensive supervisory system in the field of health increased the use of IT in law enforcement at the community level, applied smart technologies in supervision so as to build up a build up our capacities. We have designated supervisors for medical institutions on trial basis and increased our efforts to supervise over areas that have a direct bearing on people's health, such as infectious diseases 
prevention and control, and public health. In 2023, 4.3 million inspections were carried out nationwide, and illegal acts were found out and punished, effectively protecting people's right to health. Fifth, our work on popularization has become more down-to-earth. We continue to conduct public health risk assessment and on topics like the prevention and control of infectious diseases, heat waves and other extreme weather events, earthquakes, floods and other natural disasters, disease prevention and control during holidays, and other topics of public concern, we released guidelines and health notices and invited experts to explain the guidelines to the public in a timely manner. These measures effectively answered people's concerns and helped raise public awareness on public health and helped foster a good social environment for public participation in disease prevention and control. Going forward, we will continue to put people's health front and center, move faster to advance high-quality development of disease prevention and control, and foster high-level security, further strengthen the public health safety nets, provide strong and solid support for protecting people's health, and safeguard social and economic stability. Thank you. Chimpechi Workers Daily. My question is for Minister Wang. Strengthening the capacity building of skilled workers is important to advancing high quality economic development. What measures do we have in place to this end? Thank you for your interest in this field of work. Capacity building of skilled workers is an important pathway for human resources development and a key measure to address structural issues in employment. So far, there are over 200 million skilled workers in China and over 60 million highly skilled talent which provides strong support to China's high-quality development. However, we still, we still lack skilled workers for new industries, new models, and new driving forces. As well as technicians, 